Liftoff will start in T minus 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. Hello everyone and welcome to Janner Exploration and Discovery. In today's video, just like in my last two, I'm talking about survival items. And today is something that a lot of people are probably familiar with. They're either in this, their kids are in this, or they have grandkids in this. It's the Boy Scout Essentials to Survival. And I'm going to talk about this list and I'm going to tell you guys why each of these items, why I think they're good or why they're bad. First one is a map and a compass. Here's a, here's a thing about a map and a compass. If you know kind of the general area of where, you, of where you are, that's fantastic. But if you're in dead wilderness, a map does you absolutely no good for one thing. Now, if you find a road, yeah, having a map of that particular area could show you. But if you're lost, it's really not going to do you much good. Same thing with a compass. What good does it do you knowing direction if you don't know which way to head? So that's, that's another thing about those. They can be handy. They can be a nightmare, depending on what you want sun protection this is where a lot of people think sunscreen hats face coverings long sleeves pants gloves sun protection that is the basics of sun protection that is what i think of whenever i think sun protection i don't think sunscreen and guys there's a reason that you never heard about skin cancer all those years ago because everybody used to always wear like long sleeves and now skin cancer is really running wild why well first off because they're ex people expose themselves to the sun, but they wear cut off shirts, stuff though. And a lot of people are like, well, it's hot. I don't want to wear a long sleeve shirt, guys. Your body will grow, grow used to. It. I wear long sleeve shirts at 120, 130 degree weather. I don't even think about it. So, just something that you have to get like used to. And it's great to, for protecting you. Getting hats, sunglasses to protect your eyes because your eyes are really vulnerable to UV rays, especially if they get really strong. So just keep those things in mind. Extra clothing is the next item on the list. Extra clothing is something that a lot of people don't think about. Extra jacket, extra set of clothes. This is really great, especially if you go into a wet environment. And a piece of advice, guys, I've heard about this before. If you ever fall in a, fall in a river or something, it's freezing outside, take, take your clothes off. This is something that a lot of people don't think about because they think, oh, I gotta keep my clothes on or I'll freeze to death. You'll actually freeze to death faster in those wet clothes. Something that a lot of people don't think about. It's something that a lot of people don't know, and it's something that a lot of people think. Well, I got to keep my clothes on, and it shows that in these movies and stuff, though. But again, guys, it's Hollywood movies. That's not that's not real life at all. So the next one is going to be a flashlight. Flashlights are handy for a lot of reasons. I prefer rechargeable flashlights for a couple of reasons. You can bring with you solar rechargeable packs that you can use to recharge those rechargeable flashlights now you can only carry so many batteries with you and yes you can have them in like a waterproof container and you can have them in this and that and you know, everything else but something that you absolutely have to remember though is is one one <laughs> you can only carry so much weight on you it's better to have that pack that can be recharged than a bunch of batteries that and some batteries are bad like right out of the package. I know that's not the case some of the time, but batteries also go on down. Whereas with some of these things, you can actually keep the recharger on it and the light will stay burning if you need to. Now you do have to be careful with that and the disadvantage of that is obviously the sun's got to be out, but I would prefer carrying the rechargeable one, but if you can, carry both. But again, guys, weight is of the essence whenever you're carrying this stuff. First aid kit, obviously this is just a great idea all the way around. A lot of people don't think of a first aid kit they think oh well this and now i got some gauze i'm good to go that's the case a lot of the time and that's probably true most of the time however first aid kits are crucial for a number of reasons i just don't mean a basic first aid kit with bandages i mean a full cleaning kit really you need to have somebody with you that at least has a small backpack that is a first aid backpack that has scissors in it has sewing kits in it has everything that you possibly need because you can get busted open a lot of people don't like the idea of getting sewed up out there but it's just the way that it's we have to be in the wild and just like when you see people sometimes sewing themselves up in movies 
you got to be able to take that type of stuff. It's better than that wound getting infected, and that's why it brings me to my next point of the first aid kit, having disinfectant. If, if Really, if you're not going to carry but basic gauze, you need to carry some really good disinfectant peroxide because infection is the number one killer of people out there in the wild. Matches and fire starters, and I talked about this in my last video as well. Matches and fire starters are an essential part. Yes, you can get it going by like by rubbing two sticks together, but it's a lot harder than it looks, and even expert outdoorsmen would never want to waste their time doing that. Magnesium rods is like what I talked about in the last video, are extremely well rounded for this because magnesium is so flammable. For those of you that don't know that, magnesium rods and they have a striker on the end, and the particular one I was talking about had the handle one was made out of wood, shave off some wood off the handle, shave off some chunks of magnesium, and you can actually go to gun shows and stuff and actually acquire these rods and actually have bags of magnesium that's already pre-shaved. You can buy magnesium already pre-shaved, and that's actually, actually not a bad idea either. Either if you're not gonna carry a rod, carry the magnesium, a bag of magnesium on you, and some windproof, waterproof matches. That would work out just as well. Pocket knives. Pocket knives are something that you, I feel like everybody should be carrying every day. You never know when you, you may need one. You, you never know when they're going to come become of use to you. Even things as simple as opening letters, opening boxes. You never know when a pocket knife is going to be needed. and you, you Just something that you need to have on an everyday day business. I can't even begin to go into all the things if pocket knives between the cutting and things and you can even dig with them if you got to I wouldn't really dig with a pocket knife but there's other kinds of knives and stuff though that's that's why it's essential those things trail food yes and this just doesn't mean trail mix it means portable food I'm a big fan of MREs I'm a big fan of dehydrated food I prefer the MREs though dehydrated food well it's dehydrated and that's kind of what it tastes like even after you add like water to it I've tried a couple different kinds, never really cared for them. MREs actually have the ability that now that uh, you can actually heat them up, they're self-heated. So, and for those of you that don't know what that is, check that out. Check that out sometime. It's really cool. Now the downside is, but see, those dehydrated mills and MREs are going to cost you. Dehydrated is going to cost you probably three or four dollars less, but the MREs are better, in my opinion. They seem to. They seem to last longer and they taste better. So just keep that stuff in mind. Water bottle. Obviously, you need like water containers. You need things to carry like water in. You're not going to be able to have be able to stop by the grocery store and buy a case of water. Maybe you need to if you're out there in survival type situations. Again, guys, this is the Boy Scout basic essentials to survival item list that I'm telling you guys about right now. And Obviously, yes, it's a good idea to have a water bottle. I prefer a canteen. I prefer actually having two canteens. I have one on my backpack and one on my belt that I carry. The one on my belt is usually smaller than the one I carry on my backpack. However, you want to make sure those canteens stay filled up all the time. Why? Well, first off, if they start sloshing around, things are going to be able to hear you. If you're moving through the woods, things are going to be able to hear you anyway. But you don't want to alert anything to your presence, such as if a mountain lion is is as much down on his lunch and then he hears you and the only thing he could hear from a distance is your canteen sloshing because it's empty. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's a lot of weird things out there. And the last thing on their list is rain gear. Rain gear, just like what I talked about in my last two videos, having the shelter and everything is crucial. But having that having that rain gear is really crucial. You can catch pneumonia. You can get sick. You can get really sick really fast if you aren't careful with this. So keep all this. That's just a basic one, guys. I think everybody should have like rain gear and like winter gear in their truck all the time or their car and on them and their bug out bags. They should have this stuff on them at all times. Now, something that the Boy Scout manual does not mention. Or I didn't, couldn't find it online is you should have a firearm on you that is something I get it that they're boy scouts and they're trying to teach them this basics of survival but really if they wanted to update it they could even put a black powder pistol in there but that's what they could be 
carrying Dale cap and ball pistols. That would be all right. Or even Dale single shot flat locks would be a better alternative to not having a firearm on you at all. So I did that one on there. Really, outside of the water containment and just being able to stay like warm and dry, a firearm is crucial because it sure does make hunting a lot easier and it's a great protection against various things. Now, obviously, it depends on like where you're going and your items should fit the terrain for which that you're going to. If you're going in the mountains, if you're going to the desert, your attire and everything should follow that guideline. God bless each and every one of you. I'm Jared with General Exploration and Discovery. Subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads.